guys, we got a coach here for you. We're ready when you are. Hey, uh, D'Amico, uh, Fred Warner was, <clears throat> sorry, Fred Warner was talking about yesterday, he, uh-oh, yeah. hey, D'Amico, hey, what's up, man, I hope I'm not stealing Eric's question here, but, uh, <laughs> Fred Warner was talking yesterday about Marcel Harris and his uh, sort of evolution this year. You know, here we are going into week 18 um, uh, of, of the year that he becomes a linebacker. What, what can you say about that and, you know, what he's been able to accomplish this season? I think with the position change, I think as the year has gone along, Marcel is just, was able to get more reps. And as time went along, this Houston game was the game where he probably had the the most amount of reps, and he's just feeling more comfortable in that position, and he was able to make a huge play for us there to get the interception when we needed most for our team, like to change the momentum of that game. Like Marcel stepped up big time for us, and he did he did a really good job on Sunday. It's probably his his best outing of the year playing linebacker. So happy with where Marcel is and. You know, just looking forward to him continue to progress and get better, continue to learn and study, be locked in. He's he's done a good job for us. Okay. <clears throat> Obviously, I, I can't take a hint. Uh, I'm back. Uh, Fred was talking about yesterday he, that he was in a dark place mentally, you know, this year. And, you know, he talked about the pressure he put on himself because of the contract extension um, and that he's beyond that. And, and he thought, you know, the way he played against the Texans was, was some evidence. Um, did you, you know, uh, not that you t talk about your private conversations with him, but did you in any way feel like you were able to help him um, get out of that valley he was in um, earlier in the season? I think for Fred and for any guy who, you know, you get a contract, you feel added pressure for sure. You know, it, it does happen. It's just human nature. But, he just had to understand that it's still just football. He's still the same player he's always been. Just has to relax like he was before. Relax, go play. You know, just own your keys, right? And just go play ball, go have fun, play with great effort like you've always done. And the plays that you're kind of pressing to make, plays will just start to come to you because – you're loose and you're locked in. You're exactly where you need to be, and you're just having fun. You're playing a game, having fun, and the plays, the big plays, so to speak, that guys press for, you don't get them when you press. You get them when you're just doing your job, being where you're supposed to be, and, and having fun doing it. Hey, D'Amico, uh, Steve White, the NFL Network. How's everything? Everything's good, Steve. How you doing? <laughs> good, man, good. Hey, looking at your opponent this week, you've seen the Rams, like Stafford has thrown a lot of his interceptions when they're backed up, maybe on the negative 25, something like that. Have you seen anything situationally that has led to that that you might be able to take advantage of? Uh, you, did, you did before in week 10. Yeah, I think I haven't seen anything just truly situational to take advantage of it. I think – you know, with those turnovers, we know turnovers are a huge part of the game. So I think it's just a guys just really studying, studying their offense and understanding, you know, understanding when can we, you know, when will we have those opportunities to make plays on the ball. And guys just have to own their job, be where they're supposed to be. And I think those those opportunities will come with our mind is on the ball. We're attacking the ball with the right mindset and we'll get the ball. Hey, D'Amico, what can you do as far as the guys uh, who are currently on the reserve COVID list, as far as getting them ready to go? Uh, what have you been doing behind the scenes in the in the case that they do get cleared to play? How do you keep them up to date on the game plan and just what your expectations for, for them are if they're cleared? Uh, I mean, the best part about it is we've had all our meetings virtual. So all those guys have been in the meetings. They understand the game plan. They're able to ask questions about the game plan. So our guys, they've been locked in mentally. And 
you know, the guys who are on that list, they play for us, played a lot of ball for us, so they understand, you know, our our scheme, what we're trying to do defensively. And those guys, you know, we'll be grateful to have them back as soon as we can get them back. But I think there won't be any mental hurdles for our guys. They'll be able to plug right back in and get out there and help us. And is there anything you can they can do physically to stay ready? I mean, I know they can't come there to the practice fields, but can, is there anything they can do at a public park or whatever to kind of just go through <laughs> Yeah. The emotion, the uh, you know, the motions of what you expect from them. Yeah, I think it all depends on how those guys are feeling. You know, if they're feeling well enough to get a workout in wherever they can, you know, that that would definitely be beneficial for them to help us on Sunday. But the biggest thing and most important thing for me is just making sure those guys are okay health wise. That's the biggest thing. The game is the game; it'll take care of itself. But the biggest thing is just for me making sure those guys are are feeling good. You know, that's the that's the biggest thing. Obviously, you guys have won five straight against the Rams. Why do you think you match up so well against them? Uh, you know, it's division opponent, and it's uh, two teams who are very, uh, I think, well-coached teams, two teams who play hard, two teams who respect each other, and we just get after it. You know, It's always going to be a battle versus when we, when we line up across from each other, we know we're going to get their best, and they know they're going to get our best, and I think that's – what we've seen over the past, you know, couple of years playing against, you know, the Rams. It's always been a been great games, but it's always going to come down to who can take the ball away. Yeah, Domingo, um Cooper Cup, obviously everybody knew he was a good receiver coming into the year, but he's putting together like a, a Jerry Rice type year. I'm just curious as your observations on what makes him so success, successful in this offense. And the biggest thing with Cup, you see, he's a very, very smart player, talented. I mean, he can run all the routes they need him to run, but a very smart player, very efficient route runner. And, yeah, he has a quarterback over there in Stafford who, you know, can, can find him wherever he is on the field. So I think those guys started to mesh really well together, started to gel, and they have a really, really good connection. And that's why you've seen the success that they have. But two smart players working together there, they have – the utmost respect for Cup, not only him and the passing game, but you see how he blocks in the run game. That's what really, you know, make me tip my hat to the guy. He's he's not afraid to get in there and block, whether it's a defensive end, whether it's a, a uh, nickel, whether it's a linebacker. You know, he will get in there and block, and I definitely respect him for that. The last one, Jen. D'Amico, Matthew Stafford has had up and down a season this year. How much can you take away from what other defenses have been able to do to him to get pressure and kind of throw him off of his game? Oh, man, we just study it, you know, as much as we can, try to study to see what can we do, what can our guys handle, you know, to go out and play our best. But uh, as long as our guys continue to say, as long as our guys are, are locked in to our game plan and we're where we're supposed to be, you know, I it's just going to be a matter of how bad do how bad do we want it, you know, on our side. You know, guys have to go out and execute, have to play hard, and we have to attack the ball. If we do that, then we'll be just fine. All right. Thank you, guys. All right. Thanks, guys. I am ready. Okay. You guys got a coach here for you? All right. Is anyone there? No? Here we go. Hey, dude, Mike. Outstanding. How you doing? Oh, fantastic. Can Can you give us a little rundown on what the plan was or, or what the execution was at practice today as far as uh, the splitting of reps with the quarterbacks and how each person looked? Well, you don't know what's going to happen on Sunday. Um, you know, the the my crystal ball, as I've told you guys, um, isn't as – clean and glossy as it it used to be or should be maybe so the biggest thing for us is to make sure we're prepared for everything so you you, you try to do what people can do without doing too much so you set people back we have to be prepared so that we can operate um at, at our highest level um with whoever's out there and that's our main objective and that's kind of really all we um really think about when we're making our decisions. 
Kyle mentioned yesterday that you know, the Wednesday practice is, is pretty much a, a half speed practice. Thursdays are traditionally the most game like. And I'm just wondering um, from Tuesday to Wednesday to Thursday, did, did Jimmy do a little bit more each day? Have you seen progression in just the, the sheer number of throws that he's been able to make from day to day? Yeah, I'm not sure necessarily the number of throws. It's it's more you're you're just seeing how it progresses and you're trying to forecast how it will will hold up in the course of a game. You know, that's the that's the biggest thing. So you're you're trying to make sure there's no setbacks. Um, you're evaluating that, um, and then again making sure that um, everyone can operate and um, execute the game plan. Uh, as their teammates are counting on. Hey, Mike, I, I don't know how much you knew about avulsion fractures uh, before Jimmy's, um, but has he surprised you at all with what he's been able to do um, this week as far as, you know, just his ability to throw? No, I'm actually, uh, I'm one of the foremost experts. I wrote my thesis um, on that very topic. So nothing has surprised me. No, um, he, he's a tough guy, and it's, it, it is cool to see um, a, a guy try to, uh, try to work through pain, um, but he's also trying to be smart, and he knows he has to be responsible um, to the football team because we've all uh, worked, you know, all of his teammates have worked in um, blood, sweat, and tears to get to this point. You know, we're, we're in um, game 17 with an opportunity to extend our season. Um, and so he doesn't take that lightly. So that's, that's been cool. And we, we trust that, um, if, if he's able to give it a go, it's because, um, he, he knows he can, um, hold up his end of the bargain for his teammates and, and all the Niners nation. Uh, looking back at the film from the last game, how did Trey surprise you in a positive way? And maybe what are some things that you thought he really should work on that he probably shouldn't have made as mistakes? Well, I, I think, um, you know, so often a lot of us are guilty of kind of disassociating from professional athletes. And, and you know, really a thing that really impressed me was, wow, this guy had, hadn't been on the field in a while. And... Um, I was just reminded today that he 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 has what was he started two games or three games in two years, you know. So the most impressive thing was that all of that build up um, to get his opportunity, how he handled um, the pressure and how he uh, he showed um, all the fans and um, really the world what we'd been seeing on a day in day out basis, and that's a progression, um, an improvement, uh, a, a guy that. Uh, is continuing to get better day in day out and you know the his expectations are high just like our, ours are for him and it was really cool to see um him play his best football uh in as the game progressed you know when they you know so often you learn about people and how they handle trials and tribulations and when you don't score touchdowns um early you know, you don't really know how someone's going to respond. Um, and that was, that was um, an awesome thing to view. Uh, it didn't surprise us in the least, um, but it was, it was really cool that he, he was able to take the opportunity um, and play some good, good football, um, much like he has a lot in front of him moving forward. Yeah, I believe uh, the last time he played the Rams, Vaughn Miller had just signed, or just been traded. I'm curious as to what you're seeing now, how much they're, you know, they're using him and, and how comfortable he looks with them. And I imagine he'll be a lot more of an impact player this time around. Yeah, it's, um, it's a nightmare. Uh, the, the, the other s scenario, last time we played him, it was like a literal nightmare because we kind of had to like envision it in their system. It hadn't seen him out there. Um, and it's just an, another really good player. You know, the Rams are loaded with them. Um, that, you know, in a heartbeat can change the course of the game. So you have to be very smart with um, how you approach the game. Uh, you can tell that he's really gotten comfortable um, uh, doing what they ask him to do and starting to find his niche within the system. 
Um, and it's just a, another headache that the Rams present. Why do you match up so well with the Rams? Um, well, I think our success can be attributed. Anytime we've had success, it's because our players have made plays. You know, um, whether it's correlation or causation, um, that's neither here nor there. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, when we've played the Rams, um, our best players have made plays, and and we've found ways to score um, not only on offense but on uh, defense and special teams. Uh, we've been smart with the ball, so it, it's just uh, it just so happens that the our our players have stepped up to the plate and uh, challenged them well, and um, you know, but every game's independent, so. Uh, all the last three, four, or five games, whatever, matter nothing on Sunday, um, which the Rams know and we know as well. Last one. We watched the, the first half hour or so of, of practices, and there's very little of the quarterbacks taking snaps from center. H has Jimmy done that this week? And is that that process, you know, accepting the ball with his injury, is that a concern? Um, with the thumb. No, that, that's a great point. A lot of people just think about throwing, but quarterbacks have to handle the ball every play. So that it, that is something that we've had to be mindful of, that we tr we've tried to not overdo. But that's one of the things that is um, the one of the biggest motivating factors in deciding on Sunday is uh, whether or not he can handle the ball. So we, we've just just like throws, we've had to. Um, put them through it for sure, but you're trying to do it in moderation um, so you don't set anything back and you give uh, the player uh, the best chance to succeed on Sunday um, if he's able to go. But you know that we're not we're not really concerned about that. We're concerned about executing our our offense and making sure both quarterbacks are ready so we can handle whatever comes our way. Thank you, coach. Thank you, guys. That was fun. Hey Faithful, don't forget to click here to subscribe to our YouTube.